Good morning. Today I want to read chapters 41 through 44 to you of Thus Spake Christopher, my treatise on non-duality that's somewhat modeled after the format of Thus Spake Zarathustra. So let me go ahead and share my screen. And I just have a couple of housekeeping uh, things to take care of before I start. And now I'm ready. As always, my writings can be found at www.docbenton.com. Scroll down to the best of Doc Benton, and here you find the PDF version of this Spake Christopher in case you'd like to download it or just read it to yourself. Okay. But I'll start reading now with chapter 41. So, chapter 41, the man next asked, is reincarnation real? I began to answer. The Book of Brilliance speaks of reincarnation, but there is no current scientific proof of that belief, despite some compelling case studies. Nonetheless, I believe it is real. I also believe that the question of whether it is real just like the question of what happens to us after death, is largely irrelevant. Would you make any decisions differently if you knew that reincarnation, reincarnation was real? Probably not. The problem of how best to live our lives in order to promote joy and enlightenment in the present moment is still the same, and it is unaffected by the existence or lack of existence of reincarnation. Thus, nothing about the human condition changes with regard to the truth of this proposition. I believe in reincarnation simply because I like to believe in reincarnation, but its presence or absence bears no impact on what we need to do here and now in order to become more enlightened. Nonetheless, if you have a strong memory of a past life with someone you know, then even if it is a false memory, your brain may be trying to tell you something that matters. Thus, believe what you will, but be discerning enough to focus on what is really important in the present moment. Thus spake Christopher. Chapter 42, the man asked, how should I deal with distractions when I pray or meditate? I began to answer. What happens when you hear a sudden noise? It goes to that place where everything is understood. Hence, learn to let every perception take you back to the center of your awareness and being, to that place where everything is known. If necessary, simply ask yourself who it is that is hearing the sound, and let that question guide you to the center of your being. If you do that, then nothing will distract you, and the kinds of noises that may distract others will simply be vehicles that will take you even deeper into an awareness. Thus spake Christopher. The man then asked, what is my destiny? I began to answer. It often feels to each of us that we have a specific purpose or destiny in life, and maybe we do. Or it may be that our own likes and dislikes and our own talents and shortcomings propel us in those directions that we call our destiny and away from other directions. And maybe that is also true. Or maybe we each make our own destiny each day. Or perhaps we're all parts of some larger whole that is the driving force behind individual destiny. Some or all of the above might be true. However, all that really matters in this situation is what we perceived to be true for ourselves. If we feel from our deepest self that we are to walk a certain path, then we should. It matters not whether the stars or other forces are driving our fate. What matters is that we should all look to that still small voice deep within to sense what we should be doing, and then we should make our own choices and be responsible for them. Despite whatever forces of destiny surround us, we can be the captain, captain of our soul, and we should allow others to be the captains of their souls too. We should not impinge on the freedom or destiny of others. 
and by the same token, others should not impinge upon ours, just so long as our actions are not harmful to them. Every person should have as much freedom as possible to pursue their own path and their own destiny as they themselves define it. Just remember that your freedom ends where another's begins. Thus spake Christopher. Chapter 44. What is love? The man asked. What is love? I began to answer. Love is oneness and love is harmony. However, the love of another person can take on many different forms because we're all a conglomeration of several different tribes. For example, two people can be drawn to one, one another because they simply like the same things. In this situation, the likes of one are food for the likes of the other. Or people can be drawn together because they deeply enjoy talking with one another. In this case, the thoughts and ideas of each become food for the other. Or two people can unite because the physical activities they enjoy are in harmony. And if both activity and likes align, then they may enjoy a passionate physical relationship. There are many ways in which two people can be in harmony in this world. But if this leads to multiple relationships at once, then in most of today's societies, that can make things very complicated, particularly if love leads to attachment. However, on non-physical levels, love between many without attachment can be the norm. For example, consider a circle of friends who love one another in this way. They simply harmonize greatly with one another on a non-physical level without asking or demanding anything in return. That is often a pure type of love. Additionally, some groups of people will sense that they originated from the same non-physical level where all abided in a unity that willingly gave without asking anything in return. Those are the kinds of pure love relationships that can easily exist on non-physical levels. On the physical level though, it is a greater challenge to have loving relationships that are healthy and that nurture one another other without hurt. However, in meditation, it is always good to shine a moment of helpful love and blessing upon the world and everyone you know without demanding or expecting anything in return. This is the purity and sweetness of universal love without attachment. Thus spake Christopher. Okay, and I will stop there for today. So let me stop screen sharing. And I'm back. I hope you enjoyed that. I hope you come back to enjoy more. And so for now, I'll just say so long and be well. <laughs>